kind of good because I've got the sound right there anyway. It's a so hot mess. I've got to figure it out. Alright, we're on a new series. Uh, it's uh, kind of has intrigued me for a while. I've uh, been uh, pondering and praying about it and what, what the subjects of it and, um, and asking God. So just uh, you know, just thinking about it. I hope you had a good week this week and uh, uh, some of you did not hear back from me, some of you are not, some of you are still struggling, some of you are ready to kill your kids, you know, some of you are know, so, some of you are making the best of it, get things done around the house. Uh, so you know, so it's, it's at least you haven't committed the, the full act of the sin of murder um, in some cases. Oh, this is a 
say, thou shalt not murder? Oh, well, that's right, I forgot. You have a choice about your body and killing the baby that's in you. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, right, right, okay, then. Oh, he's also for a marriage between one man and one woman. Oh, but, you know, he, he, you just got to follow your true love, you know, whether it's a woman with a woman and a man with a man, you know, it's, a, it's okay, you know, it's, a, it's as long as you love them and you're sincere about it. Well, you get really sarcastic today, Pastor, aren't you? Like, well, you know, it's just where we at in our culture. It's the American dream, the American religion, it's the American gospel. And we sit back and we bash our president, who is trying to do the best to protect our country, to protect our people. He's even he's trying to get prayer back into school. He's trying to protect the, the churches and, and their freedom of, of what our First Amendments, of, 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 of being able to assemble and, and speak. Where there's another branch of people that are trying to come in there and take all of our freedom and take all of our, 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 our what we stand for. Everything that is in this book that says it's God's way, it's the holy way, it's everything else is sin against him, and we're we're sitting back and we're we're against this president and we just want to bash him and we want to hate him. Why do we really hate him? You just say, I hate him. That's what comes out of your mouth. Well, why? Because he's a man? You, you forget that when you're pointing the finger at, at him, how much you hate him, you've got three of them coming back at you because you're not as good either. Well, oh, I'm a good person. Well, let me put you in the president's seat. And let's go dig up your past. And let's go dig up the things you posted on your Facebook. And then we're going to take all of that and we're going to put it right there before a holy God that is going to get judged. What voice are you listening to? What reasoning are you hearing? And why are you choosing to do that? I remember when Obama was a uh, president. I disagreed with him on everything he did. But I did not bash him. I would say that is wrong. It's a sin against God. Gay marriages, he stood for it. He, tried, he implemented a lot of laws to be able to say that. That's a sin against God. It ain't my rule. It's God's rule. It's God's holiness. He destroyed two cities. Two cities. He wiped them totally out. Because that was the major, the major sin in that city. Was homosexuality. God judged it. Not me. God did. Read the book. What voice are you listening to say, no, oh, it's okay, they're nice people. Yeah, they're nice people, but if they die being nice and stand up, judge before a holy God, where are they going? They're going straight to hell. Does that not concern you? It's not what I love today, Mr. Pastor. Trying not to go, but I'm trying to get a point across. We've fallen for this uh, 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 this voice of American culture gospel that we forget that there is a holy God who has given us much mercy and much grace and we have fallen into this thing that we have made another God and put over uh, uh, at an altar we bow down to. He's the pleasing God. He's the God who will give me, I, I can go and live with my boyfriend, or I can go spend the night with my boyfriend and, 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 and have sex with him, and it's okay. Where God's word says that's called fornication, it's a sin. He's saying, look, look you're murdering babies, and you're, 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 it, it, that's the crazy thing. Churches can't assemble, but the abortion clinics are slap full. Oh, no, but they're six feet apart. Really? They all in the waiting room and they got, I don't know, I've not been in there, but I'm just saying. But it's still the idea. It's still murder. Murder, you're killing a baby. Science has already proved it. That life happens on conception. Science proved it. The love God already said it. You big on that. Yeah, I'm big on that because that's what this, this other branch of people are trying to come in and they're trying to say it's okay to do all this sin. We're turning it into a, we're turning it into the, the, to the empire of Rome is what we're doing. When Rome became this way, after 200 years of their existence, they fell because of their sin and judgment came upon them. 
turn from that wickedness and make Jesus Lord of our lives, the voices that we're, gonna, we're following right now is going to destroy us. It's going to destroy us. Let me read Matthew chapter 24. Verses 23 and 24. Matthew chapter 24. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, is, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders that will deceive even the elect. Get that. You get 
fine. You get in big trouble. Oh, no, that's no go read it. It's, it's, it's a day sitting well enough to go to court and prosecute. What voice are you listening to? Do you really know the voice of God? Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you really know the voice of God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit? What voice are you listening to? This is considered one of God's ways of, of speaking to you. It is His main voice. It's called the Holy Bible. Now there's many versions of it. There's a lot of real... Uh, Men of, of God that are so stern, they all believe that there is only one version you to read, and that's called the King James Version. But to me, there's a lot of us that, you know, for myself, my intelligence is only to a certain point, right? You know, I go to read the King James Version, I have to read it three or four or five times and say, Holy Spirit, I don't this, none of this makes sense, these are the vowels, and that, this, I, I'm confused. And then when I would switch over to like the NIV or the ESV or the ASV or like what, what are those? those are versions, American Standard Version, ASV, or God's Word's translation into GW. You know, and in that, it's got to get the whole point of it is that I'm reading and I'm seeking God and His ways. And, I'm, and in that, I'm going to hear His voice through the words that are taught here. Because what I read here, in, in a lot of the Old Testament stories, is men and women making choices that absolutely um, go with God or go against them, and both of them have consequences. Your, uh, what do you call it? Your choice, your choice, It's going to either bring you closer to God. It's going to bring salvation to the people around you, to your family. Or it's going to leave you in a way of deception and consequences to your sin. I want to take a look at first this, this, this first uh, message here this week. Is when was the first time we see God speaking to, to man? When do we see God first speaking in, in, in the Bible? And that, that His voice is heard. And that would be in Genesis. You know, Genesis 1, 3, it says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. To speak those words means His voice had to be heard. And in that, it created, it created, Oh, but the, no, the, I believe in the, the, the big and it was creation. I don't know every time I've ever seen, sorry, I haven't talked to military people. What happens when something explodes? It destroys. Here, God's word is that, that, that He said He spoke and light was created. So in that, He goes on, and when you read, when you start reading that, so I challenge you to go to Genesis and start just read a little bit of the uh, up to chapter three. You know, and read of how God speaks and things were created. And so much that He created the earth and all that was in it, and all animals and fish and birds and flying things. And then and on the sixth day is when it says that He created man and woman. But when is the very first time we really see that, that God has a conversation? His voice is heard to man. And we, we picked that up in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And I'm reading this one from the, it's called the version. No, I'm sorry, sorry. The voice version. Uh, I'm reading, I'm just my words here when I'm reading. Uh, the voice version. It says here, verse 16 says, He made certain demands on the man regarding life in the garden. All right, so here we go. God created man. Everything's laid out. He brings Adam to the garden. And now all of a sudden, God's first thing that's coming out of his voice to the man is he's making demands. He's making uh, uh, stipulations of what it is Adam is supposed to do. That's the man who's in the garden. So this is God. 
This is God speaking. Eat freely from any and all trees in the garden. I only require that you abstain from eating the fruit of one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Beware. The day you eat that fruit of this tree, you will certainly die. Now to me this shows that how much that God cares enough for, for mankind, for Adam, at the point of his relationship with Adam. I created you, here's all this stuff, eat anything you want, everything is available except for that one thing. There's no requirements of saying, you know what, don't cuss, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't blaspheme. Have you eaten from the tree in the center of the garden? The very one 
He's blaming God because he says, look, you gave me her. It's your fault, God. You gave me her. And how we find that many times in what we're doing, as we're listening to so many voices, and we're, we're so selfish and so inconsiderate, we're so full of sin, we're not going to take the blame for this. So that's why we get so mad and we go off on these benches and we go get drunk or we go get high or we go sleep with a hundred million women or they go sleep with a hundred million men. You know, we, just, we just can't keep a relationship going. We're going from here to there to there to here. Then that we're so, uh, we're so running from God because we don't want to accept the blame. I am not going to take the blame for this. God, you're going to do it. And in that, we get so mad. We leave church. We leave that. We get into a con controversy of something happened at the church. We get mad at the, at the church. Or we get mad at our dad or our mom because they raised a certain way. Or this or that happened in our homes. And we're getting so mad at, at, at that person. That, but we're not going to take any part of any blame for ourselves. We're going to point it at God. We're going to take it out on God. It's his fault. He didn't get involved. He didn't stop it. He didn't, you know, it's his fault. God, you gave me that woman. It, it's your fault. And it's her fault. She did. She, she put it in my hand. You're like, right. She bent your arm and said, babe, eat this. I cooked it up myself. No, no. He's <laughs> cracking up. All right, let's read on. This is God speaking. To the woman. the plant. 
plants of the field. Verse 19. Your brow will sweat for your mouth to taste even a morsel of bread until the day you return to the very ground I made you from. From dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. Being his life, our, our life has no number of years. That he went from a place of that he was blessed, that he was, it was not to know how long Adam would live that God created, but when he sinned from that point on, a number of, of years was added. Then that he was put out of the garden of, of Eden and with it, it cursed never to go back in, and then a time limit was set on all mankind to live. What voice are you listening to? Eve listened to the serpent. Adam listened to the woman. What voice are you listening to? Many women know their power of their voice. They'll use their voice in many ways to manipulate men, to manipulate their children, to manipulate the situation, and in that they know the power that they have in their voice. Because it's shown right here, she was able to manipulate her husband into saying, Child is, I ate a piece, it's really, really good. And he's by saying, wasn't that from the tree we're not supposed to eat? Yeah, see, I didn't die, though. He said, you surely die. I didn't die. You, you'll be okay. It's like amazing. It's super amazing. It's awesome. It's so juicy and tasty. So it just makes your taste, but just wah, jump alive, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, you like see the little fireworks going over your head. Well, whoa, this is cool. You know, it's like, you know almost like, like a matrix type of guy. Here's the 
even know, I want you to watch out for it. In his book, his book, he says, it's coming back like a thief in the night. You're not going to know when he's going to come back. So why not go ahead and get ready now and be prepared for the rest of the days of your life. Make your choices now to prepare for Jesus to come back now. Then say, you know what, I've got a couple more years. I mean, I'm reading what's going on here. But, you know, if, if, Trump, if Trump comes president again, well, we've got at least four more years before they get a chance to turn around and implement this, you know, this mark of the beast and the chip. We've got to get the chip in us, you know, because again, when you read the scriptures, there'll be no trading or selling without the mark. How is that how, how is that possible? Well, because if your name's not in the system when they scan you, you can't buy or sell. How are they going to know? You've got to have something on you to scan you with. And they're talking about how, you know, it's talk, rumors, voices, voices, how that you would get tricked on taking your mark by taking a, a virus shot. If another epidemic comes and they already have a virus for it, and also they pull out this needle that's a little bit bigger round than a normal needle, and all of a sudden they've got a chip in with that serum, and they shoot it in your skin. You took the mark. Were you deceived? Because it says even the elect will be deceived. Did I, did I read that? Out of his word? Who, who are you listening to? Who, whose voice is come, just, come, just echoing so loud that you're willing to turn away from God, turn away from His Word? You won't even pick up His Word and see what the truth is. Well, all I hear is this, you know, it's either one or the other. There's definitely, because definitely, Jesus said He's coming with a sword to divide. He's sticking in there, and he's, he's, people that are on the fence, He's knocking them off. And He's, you know, you ain't going to make a choice. You're going to knock you off. You're going to go off on the wrong side because you won't make up your mind. And he's, he's clearing the path. He's going to come like a thief in the night. And you're going to find yourself because oh, hear the voices. Hear the voices. We've already set up technology. We've already set up movies. And everything can be easily explained away Jesus comes and all the Christians are gone because Marvel held us out of that. Oh, now you're going, yes, it's a, a theory, okay? In the game. Yeah, in the game. Of how all the people, half of the people disappeared. It was aliens. You not know, see how the government already sent, sent out a, a notice of that there were spies, uh, UFOs spotted, and they're already, they're already preparing. They go to Jesus is coming. They're preparing for the rapture. Evil is preparing for the rapture. What voices are you listening to? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will and what I will answer when I am corrected. Put yourself in a position to hear God's voice. And that position is on your knees. Is bow and humble yourself and repenting of your sins and asking Jesus to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to sanctify you, to open your eyes and your ears, to see positioning yourself, saying, God, I want to be in your family and part of it, and I don't want to be caught up and miss it because I let this in my head. This voice that does not belong. I'm asking you, will you remove it and only let your voice be here? There's so much chatter, so much chatter. Some of us, we need, we 
first thing you can do immediately is just take a little branding from, from Facebook. So none of us need to get off of, uh, of social media and, get, and just get alone with God for a little bit and get understanding of saying this is his voice. Last, last week, a really good guy was talking to me when I asked him about what's next, what's next, what's next. You can catch that on my, uh, on my Facebook page when I did a live. And he, he said, uh, he said no. He said no. And I was like, what about no? What's going on? What, what, what do you mean no? He said, go look it up. And then when I looked it up, and, he, and the scripture really just, just very just laid it right out there. His voice said, these are the days of no. Noah was building an ark to get ready for judgment. He was getting ready for judgment because Noah heard God's voice saying, build an ark. And he laid this description of the sizes and everything and how to build it and what animals also needed to get on there. And then that, that he did everything God said and judgment came. I would be doing you wrong as a person, a friend, a brother, a sister, a father, a pastor, a prophet. If so, God's word says, build the ark. What is the ark? The ark is Jesus. Build your relationship with Jesus because he is the only thing safe to go into. Build your relationship with him because judgment is coming. The voice is spoken, but the understanding is time. It could be today, could be next week, could be five years from now, could be ten years from now. What does it matter? Because you can drive down the road and your life ends.
respect you for saving me. I was a wicked, wicked man. You saved me. You hunted me down and gave me a second chance in life. I thank you for that. Father, as we have, uh, many are watching online, and the few that are here, God, just ask your Holy Spirit now to come upon them and bring conviction of, of the things that are against you. That your voice will be clear. Very clear. On the things that are against you. Jesus, he just said, he was playing in Revelation saying, I got one thing against you. You left your first love. Many of us have got into a comfortable state of life in the American dream. Following the American gospel. Forgive us of making up that God. I know you are a good God and you are a gracious God and a merciful God, but also I know you are a just God and judgment will come because payment for sin will come. So forgive me of my sins. Forgive us of our sins. We pray for the forgiveness of the sins of this country of America, for the sins of, of adultery, for, uh, for the sins of homosexuality, for the sins of murder, of people and babies, for the, for the sins of making up idols, gods, for our lying, for the sins of our lying, for the sins of our stealing from each other and from other countries. God, come across this nation and pray and plead the blood of Jesus Christ and forgiveness of, our, of this country's sins. God, we pray for the salvation of this country. God, we pray your hand to be upon our leaders, Father. Pray for President Trump. Our Vice President, uh, our Pence, Lord, we pray that now your hand to be upon them, to protect them, to give them godly wisdom to lead us in the right direction, to point us back to you, God. God, that you will give them, that you will remove all the voices that are not of you, God. The voices that are of evil to trick them and deceive them, God. Remove them from the, the panels, uh, fire them from their positions, or, or, or open the doors that, that, that they, they get impeached for themselves because of their evilness to trick the leaders of, uh, that are pointing us in the right direction. God, anything that our presidents and vice presidents are doing that is against you, God, bring correction to them. That all things that are done will bring honor and glory to you. God, we just ask now those that are don't know you as Lord and Savior. If they die right now in their sins, they will go to hell. God, if they will just pray with you, Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross. And you raised him from the dead to pay that sin debt for my life. And I accept that gift. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new person. so much. Forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Hear their prayer of salvation, Father. God, I bless these people in the name of Jesus that you will reveal to them your love this week. Even today, the moment that this is over, that you will just show up and show off your, your amazing, amazing love for them. Because love conquers Without love, nothing is, nothing, nothing is going to be possible. We can do all things and, and, and it just comes to nothing, but love is the one that comes. So I'm asking for your love to go forth and lift the name of Jesus, your son. Again, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. In Jesus Christ, holy name.